and transform us to light. Lord, I know that you will do this for the sake of your glory. We surrender all to you. Let this place remain a place of healing, a place of deliverance, a place of transformation, a place where men meet with the King. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because it's by the power of the Holy Ghost, no man is able to do this. Week after week, we gather in your presence. I pray in the name of Jesus that you help us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let tonight not be an ordinary night, O oh God. Change our destinies. Change our destinies. We declare how much we love you and how much we need you. We appreciate the things that you are doing in our midst. We refuse to take for granted the miracles and the manifestations of your grace. We come with hearts of gratitude. And Lord, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This is your house. Your We welcome you. Lord, we welcome you. This is your house. Your This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today. Lord, we welcome you today. We welcome you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Never, never take for granted what God is doing in this place. Hallelujah. Every time you come for this meeting, realize that it's an opportunity for you to meet with him. Hallelujah. So that you don't just come and not receive. We want you to leave with something that will make a mark in your life. In the name of Jesus. Welcome everyone around you. Thank you for coming. Please hug someone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight's teaching is very powerful. Um, hallelujah. There are certain times in our lives when God brings messages that can alter our destinies. Every message is important. I believe it is powerful. But there are certain times when God just steps in and grants you keys and revelations that will make you so powerful and so blessed. I believe that if you take seriously what you are going to hear tonight, it will open us to new dimensions of glory in the name of Jesus. Help us tonight, dear Spirit of God. You are the only helper we have. Grant us grace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One of the greatest assets that a Christian can have in his life 
it's not just the ability to pray it's not just the ability to to study God's word it's not even just the ability to love God but one of the greatest assets that a believer can have is the ability to interpret spiritual things hallelujah the ability to relate the things that happen in the earth realm from the perspective of the heavens the Bible says the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the times praise God when in the days of Belshazzar the Bible says that there was a handwriting that came from the realm of the spirit and wrote on the wall Mene, mene tekel ufesen. And no man, including the soothsayers and the magicians, could interpret it. Hallelujah. One of the greatest assets that we need in these days as believers is to contend for that place in the spirit where we are able to interpret the handwritings that are on the wall so that we can understand the things that the Holy Ghost is doing. We can understand the pathways in the spirit. And this is what we seek to enforce in this place. All the principles that we teach in this place, all of the times of prayer and impartation, is to open us to that point in the spirit where we are able to relate with spiritual things. For the Bible says, the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit. Why? Because it takes a level of discernment in the spirit to interpret it. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I was excited when the Lord asked me to share what I'm about to share tonight. Because I believe that someone's life will never be the same in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'm teaching on a subject I titled, Activating Breakthroughs. Activating Breakthroughs. And then you put a colon. The ministry of destiny help us activating breakthroughs colon the ministry of destiny help us the beauty of christianity please listen look up the beauty of christianity is that every time we relate to God either in worship in fastings in prayer there is always a response from heaven hallelujah a response from heaven to this earth realm hallelujah and so God responds to us by releasing miracles by releasing signs wonders by granting us the ability to partake of his success hallelujah Christianity is very, will be very unfair on the part of God if the believers do not have an opportunity to participate in the love and the honor and the glory that God carries. I love the song that the worship team just rendered. That not only does God want to use us, but he wants us to have the opportunity to partake of everything that he has. It establishes our oneness and his desire to bless us hallelujah and so the subject of breakthrough has been something on my mind I've seen churches and ministries passionate about God passionate about the things of God I've seen ministries that fast that pray call upon the name of God they walk in holiness and righteousness but not many of their congregations ever truly experience breakthroughs. Hallelujah. The sick people come, they go back sick. The oppressed people come, they go back oppressed. The only notable thing that happens in that environment is that there are souls being saved. And while that is wonderful and great, what about families that are in bondages? What about destinies that have been tied down? What about people who need to step into the blessings of God? Hallelujah. And eventually, the congregations begin to ask questions and say, 
is is god not interested in our personal well-being is he just interested in using us for his glory is he just interested in watching us pray and fast you know interceding for souls and so on and so forth is he just interested in seeing us serve him what do we have what package has he designed is he insensitive to our needs is he unaware of the challenges that our families have hallelujah is he aware that there are doors that have been closed over families and destinies if yes is he interested in doing anything about it hallelujah and it's important that as we minister to god's people we open them up to everything that can be obtained in god by god's grace we teach you prayer we teach you how to walk in the world we teach you how to live in obedience to god but we must also expose you to the dimensions of god that can release breakthroughs in your life hallelujah that's why we take testimonies every week as a symbol of what god is doing in the lives of his people because you see when you receive personal results in your life you are motivated to follow god that may not be your primary reason but it can motivate you is that true when when you receive phone calls like the gentleman who just shared where's the gentleman that shared about his mom you can imagine now he comes for the meeting and then while he's sitting under the ad atmosphere of god's presence his mom gets healed somewhere hallelujah do you believe this guy has been motivated to press more into god believers are motivated if you see he said when john the baptist sent that they should ask jesus christ if he was the messiah he didn't answer the disciples he just turned and began to heal the sick began to do miraculous things and then when he was done he told john he told the disciples say go and tell john what you have seen in other words the kingdom of god should find visible expression the kingdom of god represents the entirety of god's sovereignty his power if god is as powerful as we preach if god is as great if he's as loving and caring as we teach then don't you think that at a point in your life your life should experience some testimonies that can encourage you that you can have a message for yourself and say i have seen the hand of god in my life i have seen the intervention of god i've seen breakthroughs in my families and I told God something. I said, Lord, I never want to be part of a ministry that does not have results. Hallelujah. I don't want to just come and deceive God's people. And it's not enough just to fall down and stand up. If you're falling down, it's not producing results. You will get angry one day. Hallelujah. But thank God we have a God that is alive and is doing wonders in our midst hallelujah and so i'm sharing on activating breakthroughs in my personal life and in my journey in the spirit there are four things that characterize seasons of breakthrough in a man's life please take this teaching very seriously four things every time a man is about to step into prophetic defining moments moments of breakthrough i'm not just talking of one testimony here realms of breakthrough where god is about to step into a life and truly do something notable there are four things that happen when you approach that season of your life i'm teaching you this so that you can know and relate with these seasons when they come hallelujah again one of the things i learned watching the film lord of the rings is the fact that they were warriors from different kingdoms and what made these people warriors was not just the ability to fight but the ability to understand seasons hallelujah when other men just stumbled into seasons those men could look and discern i remember one of them looking and seeing a red cloud and he said blood had been shed in the night the ability to look when other people are just looking you are standing from a plane in the spirit and you are saying this has happened 
because something is happening the wise men hallelujah the wise men saw a star and while other people were saying ah, ah why is the earth shining like this they understood that this is a message in the realm of the spirit that they ought to respond to hallelujah so while the star was supposed to lead men to where jesus was some other people just looked and they were moving around and they were happy yet others were taking advantage of the seasons so i don't just want you to interpret the happenings around life from an earth realm hallelujah i want you to be able to see prophetic things that when you see handwritings on the wall you don't just pass it many people have missed out on seasons of breakthrough because they have not been taught to discern moments of breakthrough in their life many families would have risen from where they are, from where they are into the prophetic destiny that god has for them but because they do not know how to understand spiritual things so follow me tonight four things number one when a major season of breakthrough is about to open up in your life the first thing that happens is that there is an unusual impartation of the spirit of prayer an unusual impartation of the spirit of prayer whenever you begin to sense an irresistible urge to pray an irresistible urge to pray not just to pray with in a group know that these are prophetic signposts these are languages in the spirit that are pointing to you that you are about to step into a major season of breakthrough and i will explain to you why these things happen spirit of prayer how many of you have sat down and suddenly you cannot tell it's not like you are not prayerful but maybe over a period of three or four days or one week you cannot rest you are praying every time you are partnering with what is happening in the realm of the spirit you may not even know but because you have yielded yourself to the holy spirit the holy spirit must not always speak to you his ultimate um desire is to lead you not just to speak to you that your body comes to a point where even without speaking to you you can permit him to carry out what the bible says the holy ghost drove jesus to the wilderness he didn't say jesus let's go jesus's body was so yielded to the holy ghost that he just found himself moving at the impulse of the holy spirit and the bible says the wind blew it where it listeth you cannot tell where it's coming or where it's going such is one who is led of the spirit so every time you are about to step into prophetic seasons of breakthrough you know what a breakthrough is a breakthrough is when the barrier that is limiting you from stepping into the next level of your life is about to be lifted or is lifted that's a breakthrough when there is a stronghold when there is a mountain when there is a limitation when there is a resistance that would not allow you to push through to that next level of life in destiny by whatever spiritual agency when that barrier is lifted we call it a breakthrough so number one what the spirit of prayer suddenly you see someone who may not even pray for an hour but you find out that there is grace to pray grace to pray while you're praying it's like there's an endless supply while you're praying you can sense in the spirit that things are happening you cannot tell what it is that is happening but you know that the more you press your prayer is doing something and is having an effect in your spirit directly sometimes you begin to pray and you get to a point in your spirit where you can even start laughing i'm not talking of laughing in the spirit joy that you cannot explain because a chord is being hit in the spirit but many people when they get to that point because they do not know the significance of that dimension of prayer they do not partner with the angels to bring in complete breakthroughs and they go back and miss out on cycles and seasons of breakthrough that would have come are you getting blessed number two when you are about to enter a prophetic season of breakthrough in your life the second thing that happens is an unusual grace to give 
an unusual grace to give an unusual grace when you are about to step into those prophetic seasons suddenly you lose value of everything around you you just know that i can give anything and it won't matter again when that begins to happen to you take note have you gotten to a point where you sit down and just look at your clothes and you can carry about 20 or 30 percent of them and just say i'm going to sew it and i tell you there is a dissociation between you and those things is because you are about to step into a new level you see how many of you have missed out on such seasons because you did not know how to take advantage if you could take advantage of it you would have stepped into major seasons of breakthroughs this that i'm teaching you is born out of the word of god and practical experiences hallelujah there are many of you who can just be walking and the next thing god tells you go for a retreat quick you are supposed to travel god just summons you and says go for a retreat the moment that happens make sure nothing is too important to make you cancel that appointment hallelujah because that's not just your normal prayer for spiritual growth it is a call to contend with the things in the heavens so that you will step into a prophetic season in your life so number one the spirit of prayer an unusual urge to pray to travel in the spirit you just find yourself blessing the Lord. You're sleeping in the night and God wakes you. That sleep cannot come back again. And you're just praying in the spirit. That's a sign that a door is about to open for you in the spirit. But many of you wake up. And when you see your colleague sleeping, just say, Kai, let me just 15 minutes exactly by the grace of God, I won't add 15 minutes. You even put one leg down on your bed so that you can wake up. And you wake up and see that it's 6 o'clock. And you see, the Holy Spirit does not struggle with the human spirit. Are you listening to me? Because it's not a demon. The moment he begins to communicate to you, it's a language in the spirit. He's telling you, watch this. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Can you stand? So that you will step into this major season hallelujah number two an unusual urge to give not just i'm not just talking of giving money alone but suddenly you get to the point where nothing that you have is like a string that connects the things that you have and you is suddenly broken away from your life and you know at that point if god asks you to empty your bank account or if god asks you to give it anything you can lose it including your family members it's not like you don't love them i'm just giving you languages in the spirit you know that there's nothing nothing and you find out that you know that by the kind of songs you sing in your place of prayer you begin to sing songs of surrender and commitment you don't even know why you are singing those songs have they ever raised a song for you and you know this is not the song that communicates what god is saying it's not bad but mm -mm, this is not the song hallelujah when you step in church and they just sing a song we can sing a powerful song like um more of you more of you it's nice but it doesn't strike a chord in your spirit and even you you think you are backsliding no no you just sit down you are not you are not connecting you are even feeling guilty about it you are wondering why you are not connecting hallelujah then suddenly they raise another song i lay it all down again and you start crying you don't even know what is happening it's a reaction to a season that your spirit is relating with the moment they begin to sing that song, anything that has to do with laying it down forgetting about it you know your spirit picks it up and that's the song you're just singing may not make sense to you but you are getting into defining moments that will open up prophetic seasons of breakthrough. Are you getting blessed tonight? Number three, when you are about to step into major seasons of breakthrough, I mean major seasons, number three, there will be an unusual confrontation from the kingdom of darkness. Suddenly, 
suddenly you notice that it's as if all hell is breaking loose over you as if the satan i mean the devil just told all the demons say look just leave everybody chase with me find with me anywhere you see her look for her hallelujah have you seen people like that so it looks like the more they are praying for you the issue is getting worse hold on that's the time to begin to see from the realm of the spirit because many people are taught to judge these things do you know why you see satan does not know your future but the moment a prophetic word is uttered what happens there is an unusual manifestation of angelic activities suddenly it sends a signal in the realm of the spirit what because they know that satan knows he was an angel before i hope you know so he knows that every time there is an unusual dispatch of angels something is about to be translated from the realm of the spirit into this realm hallelujah and suddenly confrontations from the power of darkness they begin to bring arrows of discouragement impatience procrastination offense suddenly you find out that a major season is about to enter your family and your father and mother are quarreling for trivial issues. Why did you bring the tea in this green cup? Is this the cup I use every day? And you are wondering, you are like, Daddy, what is this whole thing? If you learn to judge from the spirit, you see why you start by unusual ability to pray. Because there will be contentions. Are you getting blessed tonight? Suddenly, you are just getting offended with people for reasons they cannot tell. Someone looks at you and says, beautiful hair. You say, hey, mock me. Ah, even you, you are finding what is wrong. People say you are being so edgy. You are being offensive. What is wrong? Say, even me, I don't know what is happening. But God is telling you, go and pray. Because you are stepping into prophetic moments. Are you listening to me? The powers of darkness are finding access points that they can step into your life. And on legal grounds, hinder what God wants to do. Are you seeing why praise is a tool for victory? You see why God will give you? Are you seeing that? This is why sometimes when breakthroughs are about to come, God will distract you with praise. So that before you realize the breakthrough can come. So you lock yourself and you are just dancing in it. You don't even know why you are dancing. Because with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation many people have lost it at this point suddenly you find out that everybody is just offending you you are about to go and pray you are sensing in your spirit and somebody comes and says let me tell you something selena um i wouldn't have told you but let me tell you do you know what your sister said and you are like what again these are dangerous seeds that, that will stop you from entering prophetic moments of your life. Hallelujah. Or you are about to go and pray and then a call comes. And your mother says, do you know what happened? There was an accident. Ah, in your dreams, you are seeing your family members rejoicing. You haven't seen them cutting cake. In the physical, you are hearing that one car has... At such times, many people just dampen their spirits. The Bible says, for as long as the hands of Moses kept, it, it was up. What happened? There was victory. When Aaron and her were tired and they began to bring the hand, what happened? How can a man's hand control the victory that is happening in a war front? Many people do not understand spiritual pathways. And I'm telling you, the more you have this knowledge, the more you will reign in life. unusual confrontations in fact for some of you they may even be direct confrontations you're just walking and for the first time you hear a voice saying you will die you will die and you carry that mindset it's a seed that the devil wants to sow into your life that's the day you got up and found out that your shirts that they eye on your roommate why is hey, hey god let me kill somebody today where is she prophetic moments notice that the moment that season is aborted 
all those disturbances just minimize and you can live your normal life are you are you listening to me prophetic seasons and then number four number four is suddenly you will begin to attract certain people called destiny helpers destiny helpers there will be prophetic unusual encounters please let me have two people my god open our eyes tonight teach us mysteries in the spirit come you stand up here kenny sam just stay down hallelujah watch this this is a level look up everybody this is a level is that correct this gentleman wants to step into this level and he has been walking now he has gotten to this prophetic shift hallelujah while he's praying and fasting this is what happens can i have a third person anybody thank you Pastor Femi. suddenly god you just walk in sam. yes just be coming and God comes and causes you to intercept at the exact time with certain people he calls destiny helpers. Their job, hold his hands, is to help you and guide you to step up and they will leave. Sam, you climb, climb up, Femi, go back. That's their job. Sometimes they will come into your life just once and you may never see them again. Follow me tonight. God bless you, sirs. Four things happen to believers. This is the structure of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. When Jesus was going to go and bring a major breakthrough to a man who was possessed of devils and to go and preach in Gadara, what happened? They were in the boat, in, the, in, the, in their boat. Is that correct? Suddenly, the sea started getting boisterous. Question. Was that the first time they were going by sea? I hope you realize that the sea was not just doisterous. It was the demons, the legions of devils that were in the man at Gadara that were reacting, attempting to stop them from coming. Hallelujah. Notice, did you notice that the disciples started getting angry at Jesus Christ? They got offended. They said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? When Jesus woke up, he knew that he needed to calm them down and he said shalom what happened the bible tells us that that madman used to stay in caves who told him jesus was coming because the moment jesus stepped into gadara he was there waiting he was the first person he met hallelujah did you hear the lady that came to share the testimony about her father that how can a man be having accidents every month when i don't watch so much of football but when you are in a serious match i don't mean friendlies just to shake yourself and change jerseys real match that can change the destiny of a nation hallelujah when you are about to score what happens the people they tell them do everything quacking killing just do everything stop this guy from score. you find out that the hostility increases because at that point a single goal can make the difference are you understanding this many people and many families have missed out on cycles it's like a spiritual cycle when you miss it it will come back but it won't come back immediately so your job is to stand and discern when you see that cloud moving you begin to walk with the holy ghost to make preparations for the things that God wants to release. Hallelujah. I will not talk about the first three. I will talk very briefly about the last one. Destiny helpers. Who are these men? Who are these strange beings? That seem to come to, to, to stand by people. In the path of destiny. Please write. Destiny helpers are men and women. That we find on our road to breakthroughs. Our road to destiny. 
who provide help for the next level of our lives our miracles and our destiny there are men that we meet on our path to destiny i'm going to be showing you from god's word and you'll see how consistent this is say in the name of jesus i activate breakthroughs in my life the bible says in the book of genesis 41 if you turn there the story of joseph look up please joseph had a great destiny is that correct he had a dream and he told his brothers he said brothers i saw you people bowing to me the brother said you will see we'll kill you before that will happen and they sold him is that correct do you realize let me show you all the people that played a role in that journey the bible says it was at the time he entered the well that certain egyptians were passing why did they not pass before or after forget the fact that they bought him but they were the vehicles that transported him he didn't pay transport fare they transported him into where potiphar's house do you know that egypt was his geographical location of breakthrough are you listening to me so how was he going to go there his father would never allow him to go to egypt i hope you know and so certain egyptians in the name of buying him while they were carrying him he did not know that prophetically there were angels and activities that were pushing him to the place of destiny hold on when he gets to egypt the bible says that he went into the prison now watch this every time you are about to take a journey into destiny before you start god will show you something that you will hold in that journey for moses it is a rod for joseph it is a dream god will say note it one day we'll make reference with you will never start your journey without knowing what he gave you many of us have thrown it that jar is it, it, it's no good because it does not look for moses he said you hold this rod a day will come when he got to that point in the red sea he said remember the rod now moses stretch that rod a time has come for the ministry of that rod to come in hallelujah for joseph he had nothing but a simple dream a simple dream are you following me tonight he had a simple dream and while these guys were taking did he like it but he was going to the geography of his breakthrough when he got there what happened and this is the sign because while he was going the bible says god was with him this is how you know god is with you because even in the midst of these things you see favor the favor and the grace of god and the bible says he went into prison what happened he was faithful and potiphar made him the head of everything except his wife watch this then comes this dangerous woman who sees this handsome Egyptian hallelujah and on account of his work with God and his loyalty to his master what happened the Bible says he ran and he left his clothes there do you know if Joseph had slept with her he would have just been happy and gone back to the prison in the evening and he would have remained there who know that he slept with her but he would have remained in the prison there hallelujah and the bible says joseph was in the prison and god made it in such a way that it was when joseph was coming to the prison that the wine presser and the baker for some reasons they annoyed the king the king said go and lock them the king let's explain they go and lock them and while they locked them there then joseph steps in watch this He looks at them and Joseph is worried about their state. They woke up in the morning and the Bible says their countenance was very bad. Hallelujah. And the wine presser said, I have a dream. Why did God create a need that only the gift in Joseph could solve? Are you following me now? 
God knew that he had given Joseph grace for dreams. Then he created that need. And the wine presser got up. Please listen. He said, I had a dream. I saw this and that and that. And this and that happened. And Joseph told him, he said, wow. In three days, the king is going to call you back. And you'll be reinstated to your position. The guy laughed. He said, please, when you go, don't forget me. The other guy said, ah, me too, I have my own. No. Say, what is wrong? Said, there were three baskets on my head. And vultures came and ate everything. Joseph said, well, in three days, they'll finally finish up your case. They'll bring you out and they'll go and hang you. And the birds of the air will eat up your flesh. Watch this. Joseph did not know that those two people, they did not have gift, but they had access to the king that could bring Joseph. Are you seeing? Destiny helpers may not be gifted people, but they have access. You have the gift, but you don't have access to the king. They have access to the king, but they may not have the gifts. Hallelujah. It came to pass like that. And after the one presser was reinstated, the Bible says he forgot Joseph. But watch this. When it was time for Joseph to step into the place of destiny, what happened? God now, since the wine, the wine presser forgot him, I'm sure Joseph would have been disappointed. You now see that? He would have been angry and said, oh, two years, this guy kept me in this captivity and I helped him. But something happened. The Bible says that God gave the king a dream. You see it now? When God is ready to lift you, those who matter, he will give them a problem they cannot solve and shut every door until your gift answers to it. That's how God lifts a man. Please listen, I'm teaching you a powerful mystery. Because every king, they had sorcerers and soothsayers. This is Egypt we are talking about. Egypt had thousands of gods they could consult. But that day God shut the heavens. The magicians did everything. The heavens would not open. And the king said, you better answer my dream. You better find the solution. Kings were cruel people those days. They could wipe out a whole land because they were angry. Suddenly the magicians consulted and said, what is happening? They said, we don't know. And then the wine presser said something. Watch this. 41. Verse 9. 41. Verse 9. Are you there? Then spoke the chief butler unto Pharaoh saying, I do remember my faults this day. So after two years, the man remembered. Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in prison. In the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. Listen. And we dreamed a dream in one night. I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dreams. Listen. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, now hold on. Do you know? While all of this was happening, Joseph did not know that he was at the edge. Are you listening to me? If he had missed a defining moment, he would have remained in that prison. Sometimes, could it be that you are just a night away to a major breakthrough in your life? Have you heard that song? I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it. Powerful song many believers have gotten to the edge and then satan comes into something that aborts the whole journey Thirteen, and it came to pass as he interpreted to us so it was now listen if joseph had his way listen if joseph had his way and he ever met Pharaoh once. Do you know Pharaoh will be so impressed with Joseph. That you say why are you in the prison in the first place. But sometimes. Do you, see the irony of life. You can see a gifted person. Who graduated and he's so good. And here is somebody. Who is a blessed man. Who needs that gift. But the, that contact. Are you listening to me. There are many of our loved ones that are gifted. I heard the story of a gentleman. Who fan caught his, some of his fingers. And then suddenly it was like an anointing came upon him. And that guy could draw, you know, um, fine art students. He could do what they call it, 
um, abstract on the wall. Praise God. And then this guy had been praying to God and saying, Lord, give my family a major breakthrough. Because his mother told him, I didn't go to school. Your hands are cut, but do something. Go and learn something. And this guy was praying, watch this. When that was happening, the Holy Ghost began to give him ideas. He said, begin to do your abstract on plenty papers and store them. Every time you see this guy drawing, people are saying, your colleagues are going out to look for a job. He said, but God told me this. Watch this. Suddenly, one day, he went to visit his friend. Huh? When he went to visit his friend, his friend was talking with someone. And it so happened that they just opened the branch. This is a true story. They opened the branch of a bank. You know banks do abstract on their wall. And they had been looking for someone. The person who used to do it for the bank, he did something nasty and the bank got angry with him. And suddenly they just said, ah, but don't you draw. The guy came there with his file. He was ready. They said, meet at so-so-so place. And he went, do you know that that day he got a contract of over 4 million naira overnight. Why? Hold on. It wasn't just because the people that connected him did not even know the gravity of what they were doing. Do you realize that your destiny helpers do not know they are destiny helpers? God conceals it so that they will not corrupt what he's trying to do through them. The destiny helpers themselves never know they are destiny helpers until the miracle happens one day when you are saying it. The wine presser. If the wine presser knew that he was sitting close to someone who would be the prime minister of, of Egypt, you think he would treat him the way he treated him? Hallelujah. And then, let me rush. They call Joseph. I like, I like, I like the way. Let's look at um, verse 14. Kapo Sata Baladaba. 14. Are you there? 41 verse 14. And Pharaoh sent, listen. Pharaoh sent at the recommendation of who? A destiny helper, the wine presser. The wine presser said, I testify that there was a time I needed help. Hallelujah. And a Hebrew guy called Joseph. By this time, do you know what it means to stay two years in the prison without shaving? Without you don't have the luxury of shaving and this you were looking like a, a native doctor and the Bible says I'll show you from scripture verse 14 and Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him hastily out of where the dungeon is only your destiny partners that can connect you to come out of some dungeons you may be gifted but you will remain in some dungeons until some destiny partners come do you know that many of our family members they are praying in tongues and they are gifted let me announce to everybody here there is something you have that is in desperate demand the distance between you and your place of honor is a destiny help if you never find this destiny help us you can die a failure in life i've seen this happen so many times hallelujah when we were about to get the venue for this place when god began to speak to us about koinonia we we're praying you know how difficult it is to get venue hallelujah we were even looking for a place to pay for and i began to pray i began to pray and I had a number of options. And when I was praying, the Lord showed me, said, you will use CGC. I really didn't know. I administered only once or twice in the ministry. I said, Lord, how can you use people's auditorium? And then you start, and God said, you hold on. But he had taught me the ministry of destiny helpers. So I knew better. Are you following me now? And I knew which tool to engage. Not random, foolish prayer pointless arrow you have ak-47 you're just shooting everywhere you need to direct with target that's what many believers are doing we just pray but we do not know the bible says through wise counsel make war you can you can minimize wasting bullets many people just pray everywhere and say break to wherever you are letting me to calm down you can walk with wisdom and walk circumspectly i began to pray because i knew 
that all I needed was a destiny. Do you know it does not take more than 24 hours for God to change a man's story? God just needs to bring a man. Your father has been praying. He's a good architect. And there are people begging, begging. They want to build estates. They are begging. Can there be something that will happen in the realm of the spirit? See, there's no time I would have given you stories of how people's lives have changed overnight. I hope you believe what I'm teaching tonight. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Joseph the Bible says and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came to Pharaoh and Pharaoh said unto Joseph I have dreamed a dream and there is none that can interpret it and I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it and Joseph answered Pharaoh and said it is not in me God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace hallelujah and then he interprets the dream. Verse 32. It's amazing when your gift begins to speak in the place where it is honored. Do you know something? Listen. Your gift will never speak in a place they don't value and honor it. Hallelujah. That's why you can see someone who is a worshiper. He goes somewhere to minister. It's not the place of his honor. They don't even honor it. But he can step into another place. Your gift will always create an effect where it was designed to be honored always hallelujah 32 and for that the dream was doubled unto pharaoh twice it is because the thing is established by god and god will shortly bring it to pass look at the ease at which joseph was interpreting this dream and the magicians were all watching god orchestrated an event where all the all the senate members of egypt were gathered and they were listening see listen whenever god begins to prepare a table before you learn to discern from the spirit because he will be taking you to a place you never dreamt of he'll lead me and guide me to the city up above he'll lead me and guide me to my place of destiny I know he leads me and he guides me to the city up above Lord you lead me and guide me to my place of destiny hallelujah 33 now therefore let pharaoh seek out a man he didn't know he was talking about himself desperate and wise and set him over the land of egypt let pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of egypt in seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up grain under the hand of pharaoh and let him keep food for the cities just jump verse 39 this is where a man's breakthrough comes after 12 years of misery being transported into his destiny by people he did not like facing situations he did not know were orchestrating themselves for his lift in 39 and pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as god has shown ye all this there is none so discreet and wise as thou art immediately without prayer without fasting help me read verse 41 to read and thou shalt be over my house no interview no meeting with any council member kings did not make stupid decisions they met with their wise men but the king announced he vetoed it thou shalt be over my house and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will I be greater than you. 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Five minutes ago, a prisoner. 
five minutes later the prime minister my god how can you explain this the people who shaved him say so we were shaving the prime minister the people who dressed him and imagine pharaoh who took him to the prison i mean potiphar now he had become lord imagine what potiphar's house wife would do hear me friends god is in the business of changing the lives and the stories of men and of families it does not cost him so much all you need is the man that requires what god has given you he leads me and guides me to the place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city up above your mother has a large poultry farm there is a major hotel that is being constructed one manifestation of destiny help us at a recommendation they can begin to say madam begin to supply this hotel for as long as the hotel leaves see friends every man i know who has been blessed in any area of life got to a point in his life where he was led by destiny helpers to enter fearful mind-blowing and irrecoverable parts of destiny let's look at jesus we call him the king of kings we call him the lord of lords but let's see all the people that play different parts in the life of jesus did you know the bible says I don't know if I should read it. All right, let's read it. Luke 2. Let's hurry up. Because we are going to do some prayer this night. Hallelujah. Prayer this night. I shared it with the leaders on Sunday. God began to speak to me that a breakthrough anointing is coming upon the house in a very, very, very significant way. And we prayed in that light. Luke 2, verse 25. Luke 2 verse 25 this is the story of Jesus are you there and behold there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon and the same man was a righteous and devoted man waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord Jesus hold on look up this guy called Simeon hallelujah the Bible says God told him he would not see death. His job was to wait until he prophesies into the life of Jesus before he would die. Are you seeing? We don't hear the names of all these people in scripture. But tonight I want to show you people who took the destiny of Jesus and passed the button for him to become our savior. Hallelujah. And then he prayed and prophesied. Let's look at verse 36. So one destiny helper we see in the life of Jesus. Simeon. Number 2. 36 now. And there was one Anna. Listen to how the Bible describes her. What does he call her? One Anna. Hold on. He said one Anna. Annie. One Anna. There was one Anna. Hold on. But without that one Anna, there will be no Jesus. There will be no redemption of mankind. There was one Anna, a prophetess. The daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. He said, and she was of a great age and had lived with, with a husband seven years from her virginity. Seven years and the man died. So what was she doing with the remaining part of her life? Let's read on. And she was a widow about four score and four, 84 years. So for all that remaining time, 84 years, the Bible says, who departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayer night and day. And she, coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for the redemption of Israel. She was the woman who was praying that Jesus be born. Are you seeing that? There was a woman behind the scene, a destiny helper, praying and fasting at age 84 that Jesus would come. That, that what has been prophesied let me tell you if there were no people to pray they would have killed jesus because the people would not be sensitive to angelic activities they would have killed him and there would not be redemption for mankind destiny help us we don't honor them 
The Bible never talks about Simeon again. The Bible never talks about Anna again. Are you following me, please? Destiny help us. At the death of Jesus, the Bible says, listen, that when Jesus had carried the cross, he had bled so much, and the Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. He carried the cross to the point that this was him and the place that would bring redemption for mankind. But there was no more strength. And what happened? He fell. At the point where he was falling, one black man meandered that road called Simon of Cyrene. Are you following me now? And they said, Simon, come. They didn't ask him whether he had eaten or not. They didn't ask him where he was going. They just said, Mr. Man, pick up this cross. What happened? A destiny helper. He carried the cross. Cruel men. No devil can resist your destiny helpers. If you, these were men who would not allow Jesus to drink water, but they allowed a man to carry his cross for him. And Simon helped Jesus. And so Jesus could regain some strength. The Bible says that when Jesus died, there was another strange rich man called Joseph of Arimathea. He had a virgin tomb because the prophets had, been, had prophesied that none of his bones would be broken and that he would be buried in a tomb that is virgin. So God had led one man to buy a grave. How can a man buy a tomb and keep it for his own death? He didn't even know why he bought it. Remember when Jesus wanted to come in the triumphant entry. The Bible says a man had tied a coat. He didn't tell us the man. He said go and tell the man the master had need. At once he released the coat. Are you seeing all the people that played parts? When you watch your Jesus of Nazareth. They silence those people. And so you don't even know. You just see Jesus. But without these people in his life. The Bible talked about the wise men once. Didn't tell us anything about them again. It talked about the shepherds. Didn't tell us anything about them again. Now Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible says Joseph of Arimathea was an influential man. It was on account of his influence. So a rich man was required for the redemption of men. It was the rich man that used his influence and went and said, give me the body of this man, let me bury. If not, they would have left Jesus to hang on the cross there. Are you listening to me? Now we don't follow up these stories very well. And they took him to a virgin tomb and they laid him there. Look at all the people that played roles in the life of Jesus Christ. Moses, another man. The Bible says, when they were killing Hebrew children, you remember? His mother put him in a basket. The word Moses means to come out of a basket. The mother put him in a basket. And do you know that she put a Hebrew material in the basket and pushed him? How can a mother? That was a sign of desperation. She said, let me just push him. Oh God, guide him. Suddenly, the water started leading Moses to a place for no reason, Pharaoh's daughter just said, I have not taken my bath. Don't they have bathrooms here? I will go to the stream, this stream. At the exact point where the baby was coming, that was when she was bathing. And the Bible says she had the sound of a child. She would have said, go and kill him. When she saw it, she started laughing. Her father gives an instruction to kill people. The daughter is saving the major person who they were supposed to kill. Destiny help us. Look at the drama that happens in the spirit. Your father gives an instruction. It was really Moses they were looking for. But now, Moses was in the house and they were killing other people. That was the deliverer. The mother, a Hebrew woman, she didn't have much. But do you know what happened? When they pushed Moses, the daughter got, and then the maid of the mother came and suggested, say, do you want a nanny? They said, of course. He went and brought Moses' mother. To come and be a nanny for her own son. And they paid her for it. Destiny help us. I want you to see that this is no coincidence at all. No threat. Moses grew up. He ate well. He was nourished. No joint this. No nonsense. Because there was an assignment waiting for him. He was in perfect shape. Hallelujah. 
have you been taking note of certain people many of us have been cheated because we have neglected these strange sets of people we live in a generation where all we are looking for is men of god could it be that after the prophecy from the men of god there are ordinary people some of you come for koinonia and you sit down close to the person who can suggest something to you that will change your life forever are you getting blessed the bible tells us that a man called saul was persecuting christians everywhere and having met with god with jesus christ on the road to damascus he said he should go to the house of who judas and stay there who is that judas we don't know he just said go and stay in his house destiny help us he stayed there three days and then they sent a man called ananias we heard about him once didn't hear about him again and ananias came and said brother saul jesus whom you saw sent me that i should lay my hands upon you that you should be filled with the holy spirit and receive your sight when that happened he went away the bible says a certain time came they met one prophet called agabus he came out from wherever we don't know a man called agabus all his daughters were prophets and he gave a prophecy hallelujah you read all through the bible and see several people ruth and naomi haven't lost her husband haven't lost everything the bible says that ruth told naomi say my god will be your god and my your god will be my god your people my people the bible says while this a man just came out from wherever called boas and he told the people we don't know who those people are he said as you glean leave some of the food their names were not mentioned just leave some food so that she can go and take care brothers and sisters if you miss the ministry of destiny helpers in your life listen to me you may never arrive your destiny no matter what kind of prophecy is given unto you there are many women who will not get married because the person who will connect them with their life partner is not there someone can just tell you come come with us hallelujah let's go for fellowship somewhere pastor um Femi stand up just go and stand there and god will orchestrate it in a way please sit down make yourself very comfortable hallelujah praise god now this lady sits down she has been praying for a life partner if you have not been praying about it you better start praying she has been praying oh god a godly man a man who loves and fears you and what happens we cannot even find a friend again who invited her and she sat down and while she sat down sam is worshiping now listen come sam sam gets up and sam is lifting his hands as we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name you deserve the glory what happens while sam is moving left and right doing the business of the father suddenly sam finds out that he's been drawn to this role sam will move this way and sam will be drawn and then a preacher like me will say talk to your neighbor and says your time to be blessed and sam turns and says your time to be blessed and the holy ghost will say did you hear what you said hallelujah a few years after they are happily married and when you ask them what happened they say someone that's what they say someone the someone may be in the congregation but may not even know that he or she was the person who made this happen are you listening to me destiny help us many people have missed out every time you are entering a prophetic season of breakthrough in your life make sure you begin to handle with utmost respect 
the people that begin to come around you because some of them may not even be Christians somebody can just come drunk with beer it may even be your loved one and for the first time you will say something sensible in years you say ah you didn't go for fellowship this night then you hiss and go back and God will saw your address as you are coming in that's when God will step into your life in a mighty way hallelujah men who do not know these principles die as failures in life and wonder oh God why are you not changing my story hallelujah this is very important I have seen this happen in my life when God showed me that this would be the venue how it was going to happen I knew listen the next time you are trusting God for a breakthrough in your life don't think he's just going to come by an angel flapping his wings and says take men men have been God's instrument of breakthrough hallelujah Are you receiving something tonight? Am I challenging you? And then we met Prof. And Prof just came and spoke to the church once. Once. And they came till today. Since we started in March 2011, we have not had to pay one naira for this auditorium to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. In this same Zaria, destiny help us. It's not a big thing for it's not a big deal for many of you until the day you get into positions where you will require the help of men are you listening to me many of us have pushed our destiny helpers away either because they do not carry forms that's the problem we have with people who segregate people we are not the rich ones we are the ones who our fathers are senators what is your father capital leave this place we are the ones who are intelligent. What's your CGP 1.5? Get out of here. Hallelujah. We are the ones who are smart. We attended Queen's College. Which church did you, which, which school did you attend? One school, they have even forgotten the name. Leave this place. We are the ones who went abroad. We spent six years abroad. Where have you gone out from? I've just been in my local government. I've not even gone out. Leave this place when you begin to treat people that way get set for a rude shock in life because your destiny helpers will never assume forms that will attract you to them you must have a discerning grace to look beyond them some of them may be visitors every time they come to your house you know they are coming to collect your father's money but maybe that day maybe that day that day it could be some gatekeepers in your house every time you look at them Adamu, Adamu, how I say, well done, man. how are you? You are insulting the man. One day he will look and say, sorry. I saw one application. There's one newspaper here. You say, let me see. And you just find out that they need exactly what you want. And it will change your life and your story forever. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I was told the story of a lady who had been trusting God for breakthrough. Hallelujah. And the day they called her, for a job interview in all sincerity she did not have any money the mom did not have money there and it was her neighbor who was a gate man she begged him it took a lot of humility for her to beg him guy said give me my money i said make sure you give me and i think he gave her was it 500 or 200 she transported herself got that job when she got the job they were going to lodge her in a five-star hotel for one month first where they would take her are you listening to me gave her 0.8 million to be able to get a nice house this is true life story hallelujah all that lady that lady bought a bike and came and gave the gate man the gate man was resting little did he know his breakthrough was coming she just gave him a bike he left the work immediately immediately many of you in life listen to me this is a powerful message many of you in life have neglected certain people you may stand and look at this brother and just say kite i beg jerry many of us relate with people only based on what we can get from them you need to stop that demonic attitude the day 
I don't need anything from you. You are not my friend again. The day necessity brings it, suddenly, ah, ah, Pastor Femi, we need venue. You are his friend. If that is your attitude, you will miss out on many prophetic things. You can see someone, the person is wearing a shoe that is not very nice. Thank God for the 10,000 naira one your father bought for you. The person may not have what you have, but he has a, he knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that can open the door that your family has. Every prayer point has a human being as the answer somewhere. Every prayer point. Every prayer point. I tell you, if you are praying for a job, that job is available somewhere and it is at a platter of gold. One note can change a man's destiny. Activating breakthroughs through the ministry of destiny help us. Could this be why some of us are where we are today? Could it be that that's why some of our family members are where we are? The gentleman that always comes to your father and your father says, don't tell him that I'm around. Could it be that that very day he came with a news that will set the family forever and the person will live and go forever? We are going to be praying. Hallelujah. We are going to be crying for a restoration of destiny help us that we have allowed to slip through our hands. We are going to be praying for sensitivity. Many of you treat everybody bad. You treat people rude. You are hostile. You talk to people. You say, that's how I am. Because you feel you have your world met together. A day will come. You will find out that what you have, you don't have access to a king. And it is God that will connect you there. Hallelujah. Today, by the grace of God, many places where I go and minister, I don't know those who told them about me. They just said, we heard about you. Who were the people who popped? The Bible said it was noised abroad that Jesus was in town. We do not know. I only will pray for those people in my secret place that God will bless and honor them. You may never know. Never know. Sometimes we just get seeds from people coming into the ministry account. We don't even know the people. Could it be that one destiny helper shared his testimony one day? Are you listening to me? See, I am convinced that it does not cost God a fortune to cause a major prophetic breakthrough in your family. I was told about a man who had been saving to buy some cars, you know, he just a, a, a little car. And then one day, when he was going to buy the car, God sent him to go and um, greet, you know, like their elder ones, like an uncle. So when he went to go and greet the uncle, he was sitting outside. These are true stories. He was sitting outside. And then a rich man came in to see the uncle. And then he told him, he said he should wash his car for him. And he started washing the car. Of course, he sounded insulting. But then that's a big man. He was washing the car. Then when he was washing the car, the uncle didn't see him. For hours, they were gisting. He washed the car, cleaned it, and sat down. He was even getting angry. When they came out, the uncle was hostile to him. He said, why have you come to see me? Don't you see that I have meetings? The, the rich man asked him, he said, what is it? He said, I just came to tell you that I gathered some small money. I want to buy a car. And then the rich man asked, just jokingly, he said, what car? He said, go. The man laughed. He said, is that a car? He said, the next day, you should come and meet him in his office. I'm telling you, I lie not. He gave him a brand new Toyota the next day. See, let me tell you something. It's not everything that money can do. Learn this early enough. Because many people brag with the monies of their parents. My father is a senator. My mother is a this. There are many people who were healed in Koinonia here. We still do not know who brought them. Someone referred them on the road. Told them, do this, do that. And they came and they got healed. I made up my mind never to. That's why I treat people with love and honor and respect. You don't know who. It could be a little girl like this, my sister. She may just look at you and pray a prayer for you. And say, God just asked me to touch your head and just touch your head and say, bless you. Suddenly, you see every door opening and you are like, what in the world is going on? 
Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Sometimes God can lead you to a meeting. You don't know the name of the ministry. You don't know the name of the man of God. You don't know the name of anybody. You don't know the ushers that brought you. All you know is that one word was declared. You carried that word. You went back. Most times, you never get to see your destiny helpers to tell them thank you. There are only few times you get to meet them. Four things that define prophetic moments of breakthrough. Number one, the spirit of prayer. Grace to pray like never before. Number two, a heart to give. Suddenly there is a dissociation between you and whatever it is that you have. Number three, demonic confrontations that attempt to discourage you. Number four, they begin to come. Destiny help us. They come as phone calls. They come as friends. They come as enemies. They come as unprofitable situations. They come as hostile, different things. Hallelujah. I'll never forget someone who had an issue with his supervisor. Final year student some years ago. He had a very serious issue with the supervisor. And the supervisor would not even look at him. And somehow, somehow people began to mediate. Another lecturer was mediating. And when he finally got to call the guy in, they began to talk. After insulting him and shouting and doing every kind of thing, he said, where are you from? And that was where a conversation started. And they wouldn't end that conversation till after three hours. That guy found out that there were certain opportunities he desired that that student had ways. He knew his father could help out and so on and so forth. He was actually a property the man, the lecturer wanted to sell. And then he got to find out that the boy's father was a real estate agent. They exchanged numbers there. And that man's life changed. Who have you been neglecting? God is asking you a question. Don't look at your neighbor. Who have you been neglecting? Because they may not speak English like you. Because they may not, they are not charismatic as you. Who have you been neglecting? Because they don't belong to your church or they don't come for koinonia. Or because they are not Pentecostals. Huh? Because they are not filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, there's this rubbish association of religious things that go on. We are the ones who pray. We are the ones who fast. We are the ones who, who, we are the ones who know God. God will always use the most unlikely means. Never forget this message. Could it be that your destiny helper is here in Koinonia? Sitting close to you. Hallelujah. When my younger brother was very small. He drank paint one day, took a cup of paint and drank it. And he fell down there, fainted, created commotion and everybody was just running helter skelter. They took him to the hospital, but that was an opportunity because people came to greet. Hallelujah. And there were certain people my father wanted to see who would not respond to him. They came to greet my brother. And finally, some opportunities was trusting God for came by. I'm teaching you wisdom tonight. Many of you will need to call your parents and tell them, you stop insulting everybody that comes. It doesn't matter what they have done. God can still use them to be the ladder for you to step into destiny. There are some of you here. There are people that you can never look eyeball to eyeball with. You swear and say, till Jesus comes. Because of what you did to my mother. Because of what you did to my father. They gave us 130,000 to share. My, my, young, my elder brother gave me 2K. And when may God punish you for as long as I live, calm down. Do you know that one day a door can be opened? I pray every time and I tell God, there are destiny partners that are attached, destiny helpers attached to this ministry. There are destiny helpers attached to my life. There are destiny helpers attached to your life. Once again, let me use this last example and we'll pray. Two people, one stand here, one stand here. Anybody? You, my brother? 
Just stand there. Never forget this. The distance between you and your breakthrough is not as far as you see. I don't care what it is. Hear me. The distance between you it could be a carryover cause you are praying and saying oh God but they can wave this thing and you have done everything you know to do one day God can just send someone and they'll be discussing about you in the office and they'll say please help this person he has tried the distance between you is a destiny helper and I'm telling you it can be seconds away it can be minutes away only learn to recognize destiny helpers they will come in forms that you will not appreciate them after the grace here there are people who come and just look there are some people who just send me text messages with one scripture jokingly they did not even know i don't know them i don't have their numbers but that one scripture just gives an insight to something god has been attempting to communicate to me destiny help us we are going to cry unto God are you ready to pray God bless you rise up on your feet say the distance between me say it as loud as you can the distance between me and my breakthrough is a helper away say the distance between my family and their breakthrough is a helper away Prayer point number one, you are going to cry unto God and say, Lord, I, I repent of people I have neglected. I, I want you to really pray and say, people I have kicked out of my life. Destiny helpers that would have taken me to a glorious level in my life by now. Lift your voice and pray. Kapo shatala kapanarara. Kamprata kotosia. People who would have given me relevant information. Those who would have connected me with helpers. Lift your voice and pray. Some of our family members are struggling aimlessly because there are people who can help. Wine pressers, bakers, men who can take you to the king. It's not as hard as it seems. I am convinced it's a destiny help by way. No matter what you need, financial breakthrough, a miracle, a prophetic word, direction in your life. Say, Lord, I repent for neglecting destiny helpers. I've let them come and pass. I refuse to activate defining moments in my life. Pray on behalf of your family. Say, Lord, for my father, for my mother, for my brothers, they would have gotten jobs by now. They would have built houses by now. They would have gotten contracts by now. Doors would have opened. That terminal disease would have left by now. My family would have been together by now. But for the neglect of destiny help us. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. And I want you to pray this with all your heart. He said I will restore to you. You are going to pray and say Lord. Let that cycle come back again in my life. Let that cycle I missed as a result of carelessness or pride or arrogance or insensitivity. Lift your voice. Say, Lord, let the helpers come again. Lord, let financial helpers come. Lord, let marital helpers come. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, let academic helpers come. The distance between you and your breakthrough is your wine presser is your wine baker it's not hard is there anything too hard for God to do I'm telling you 
in one day God can change your story in one day God can change the story of your family members restore pray restore for my family restore oh God opportunities that have been lost opportunities send them again oh God help us of destiny send them again reactivate breakthrough reactivate breakthrough hallelujah let me tell you a little story i have a friend listen to me i have a friend in abuja this guy went to abuja a poor broke person with nothing but his faith hallelujah and this guy had been praying and said lord change my story help me this guy was crying praying people told him and you said stupid boy you got up and came to abuja no house no car no nothing this guy was praying and one day it always happens one day you don't even know that's why you must be prepared he was just sitting down and a friend called him he said where are you he said come quick this guy just ran and he entered the room and he saw a big man and some people were talking and he said i wanted to involve you because god asked me to bless you <laughs> and he sat down and the rich man was going to buy a plot of a, buy some plots of land 720 million 720 million and 10 percent goes to the agents so they brought him this guy became a millionaire overnight he didn't do anything they just brought him and counted the number of people the 10 percent agency fee was what changed his life yet there are many tongue-talking estate agents who have been in abuja since 1990 since 1999 praying and running with complimentary cards this guy was wearing palms he wasn't wearing a suit palms and his life changed overnight brothers and sisters if you ever forget anything this night remember that your prayer request is in the hands of a man it takes god who is the father of spirits to connect the lines and that's going to be our next prayer point you're going to say lord by the instrument of the prophetic i call forth they that have been destined to take me to the next level to take my family make sure you are praying lord prophetically pray those who will open doors of jobs doors of marriages doors of ministry doors of anointings doors of favor doors of lifting those of success those of increase those of breakthrough make sure you are praying pray it with all your heart your family story can change you have been praying and fasting could this be the message could this be the message pray say lord whether in lagos or abuja or kano or samfara the united states the caribbean by the prophetic power of the spirit let there be a connection orchestrate a meeting let there be a meeting pray pray god wants to take you from this level to another it's a year of supernatural exploits exploits by the spirit your story can change Activate defining moments. Activate breakthrough in your life. Come on, prophesy. I call them. They are coming into my life from the north, the east, the south. I pray for E and I. Destiny help us are coming. We receive them. We receive them. We receive them. We receive them. Hallelujah.
let me give you one little story. Look at me. When Professor Madi was the vice chancellor of Amadou Bello University, many of you did not meet him. There was a gentleman who did very well, but he did not get admission. Hallelujah. And the guy just went for reasons he could not explain. He went and sat down near the Senate in the night. And Professor Madi had the culture of walking into students' hostels, walking around just to see what is going on. And when he walked, he saw the gentleman and he called him. He said, why are you sitting down here? He said, sir, look at my wire result. Look at everything. But my catchment area is not there and they didn't give me admission. He said, you are such a brilliant boy. Do you know what he told him? He said, go home and pack your load and come back. When he came back, they had printed his admission letter. This is true. It's a confirmed story. Hallelujah. I know about a student who had been victimized for years till he was in 300 level. Whatever it is that happened, either his name or his matriculation number clashed. And what this guy was seeing was not his real CGPA. This guy would work so hard, but when the exams come out, he would not be it. And then one day, someone just came in and for whatever reason, the person decided to start cross-checking things. The next thing, they put on the notice board that they wanted to see him. When they called him, they said he should go and bring his results and his courses that he registered. Do you know, true life story, when they, this guy was up, uh, maybe around 1.7 something, by the time they corrected everything, he was supposed to be in 2-1. In all sincerity, my cousin, my cousin was a student in this school. My cousin was a student in this school. He wrote a major exam that he got A. And when the result came out, they gave him F. This guy they didn't know, he knew that he had, he had read. But you see, sometimes, even when you have the evidence, you don't have access to the king. There are many of us that have evidences that would wipe our night time. But that access to the king. Hallelujah. And one day God raised a visiting prof who just came and he just complained and showed him everything. The man took on the case by himself until they rectified it. Look at me for a moment. What do you expect God to do in your life and in your family? It's in the hands of someone. It's in the hands of someone. That breakthrough is in the hands of someone. A house to complete. For your loved ones to go to school let me tell you no matter what it is expand your mind tonight there are men who are carriers of miracles they don't even know there are some of you that your loved ones need some jobs they have been suffering you know that they want to change where they are working or they don't even have a job they are praying they are applying cv after cv if it is destiny help us they will accelerate your path you will jump protocols. We are going to pray. Say, Lord, I receive discernment to see these people when they come into my life. Lift up your voice and pray. It takes discernment. It takes discernment. It takes discernment. Say, Lord, let me discern. They may not be my tribe. They may not be my friends. They may be the enemies of our family. But Lord, grace to discern when you are about to use them to change our story. Hallelujah. Final prayer point. Now you're going to pray and speak over your life and tell yourself you are breaking through and breaking forth on the left and right don't keep quiet please don't keep quiet prophesy i break through from the left the right the east the west oh hallelujah i activate breakthroughs i establish it in the name of Jesus, by the spirit of prayer, I contend against every power of darkness. 
Come on, pray. Pray against every satanic force. Pray against every power of darkness that wants to attempt to abort your breakthrough. God wants you to smile. God wants you to smile. God wants you to smile. He wants to encourage you. He wants your life to be fruitful. Satan get lost. Be lifted all ye gates. Let the family of Koinonia receive breakthroughs. I prophesy breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. Breakthrough. Financial breakthrough. Marital breakthrough. Family breakthrough. Academic breakthrough. Spiritual breakthrough. Breakthrough in your job. Let your family members smile. I provoke it from the realm of the spirit. I provoke it from the heavens. I activate the angelic. I activate the angelic. Let angels begin to move to every family. Let angels begin to move over your academic. Angels move over your finances. Angels move over your family. Angels move. I activate the operation of angels. Contend with the powers in the heavens and release breakthroughs for God's people. Let the angelic contend with the powers that delay, that stop people from entering their prophetic breakthrough. I release breakthroughs. I release breakthroughs. I release breakthrough. I speak it in your life. I send an anointing into your life. A breaker anointing. A breakthrough anointing. I send it into your life. I send it into your academics. I send it into your family. I send it into your finances. Those you do not know, I cause them to arise and help you. I cause them to arise and help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. Everywhere your gift is needed, I command them to begin to talk about you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I activate breakthrough for you. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere your gift is needed, whoever needs your gift in Nigeria, I stand as a servant of God. I command a connection in the realm of the spirit beginning from tonight, 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 in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for every one of your family members looking for a job. My God and my King tonight. Let testimonies rise from this message. No matter how long, tonight, let someone talk to somebody. Talk to somebody and talk to somebody. And connect them for breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. For your family members. I command. Help us. Those who will connect them to projects and contracts and opportunities. Yes, they don't merit it. But by the power of destiny help us. I connect them to the breakthrough for the next level. In the name of Jesus. Where you have cried academically. I connect you to help us. Professors who will help you. Admin staffs who will help you. Admin staff who will help you. Members in the Senate who will help you. Whether for accommodation. Whether for your result. Whether for missing script. Whether for your wayek. Whatever it is. In the name of Jesus. As the Senate and the faculty board members. Meet over your results and your performance. May a strange man enter that meeting. And advocate for you. In the name of Jesus. Anywhere they want to turn down your family members or turn down anything, let a strange man come. 
we don't want to know the name let a strange call come let a strange connection come I prophesy it I release it to you in the name of Jesus I release testimonies 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 from this breakthrough experience beginning from tonight I command calls from destiny help us calls from destiny help us calls from destiny help us connections with destiny help us they will travel and come and meet you you will meet them on the street they will come to your homes in the name of Jesus you will see them in your dreams God will connect you for every one of your family members that is supposed to be married and they are not married the husbands or the wives they are not in space they are here on earth Lord we pray tonight as a family by the power that is in the name of the resurrected Christ I pray let help us lead partners to their mates in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus we command supernatural marital connections in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we bind every devil we bind every power that attempts to cause delay we set them free from every curse and every yoke of bondage be released in the name of Jesus the ministry of destiny help us all through this week I want you to pray cry out and say Lord bring them I believe you will hear fearful testimonies in this place as a result tonight I've shown you a very mighty secret don't forget it too soon hold it every time you are praying over something the answer is in the hands of another person stop beating about the bush every man and every authority can answer when God calls yours is just to pray that God will connect you hallelujah you're here you're not born again now is the time for you to have an experience with the Lord Jesus or you've given your heart to Jesus this is the greatest of all breakthroughs that you start a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and tonight let this be that night where you will begin a new walk with the Lord I want to give you an opportunity everybody keep standing you're here and you've not given your heart to the Lord or you've given your heart to the Lord once but you found yourself derailing in the path of destiny I like you to leave your seat and come out quickly I want to pray with you is there any kind of person like that hallelujah please don't be afraid you need to come out leave your seat and come appreciate them someone is coming appreciate them don't remain in your seat appreciate them another brother is coming they are coming appreciate them this is the beginning of breakthroughs keep coming keep coming jesus is calling enough is enough keep appreciating them they are coming thank you for coming lord we celebrate you keep coming brother god bless you god bless you i see you sister god bless you god bless you god bless as many of you who are coming it's the beginning of a new journey it's the beginning of a new journey no devil will hold you no devil will keep you my sister god bless you keep coming keep coming this is why god brought you tonight keep coming the lord bless you no matter what the challenge is keep coming hallelujah thank you so much for coming the greatest way to activate breakthroughs in your life and to secure a life both in this realm and in the life to come is to give jesus your heart no one condemns you but tonight we want you to start a real journey i believe that the holy spirit brought you out by himself and i salute you for the courage hallelujah lift your right hand and pray after me everyone standing say lord jesus i come before you tonight unable to help myself i believe that jesus is lord over my life i confess my sins and i declare that jesus is lord I receive eternal life into my spirit from today I'm born again forward ever backward never Holy Spirit 
Come and live in me. Make me a great tool in the hands of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now let me pray for you. Father, preserve these ones. You brought them out by your spirit. Preserve them. I pray that their salvation will last. It will be genuine. And Lord, that they will begin to grow from grace to grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I curse every devil of darkness that will want you to move back into whatever you were doing before you came to the Lord. Let this be a new beginning for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for coming. I want you to follow the ushers quickly. They will have your details. And tomorrow you will be meeting with Pastor Jakes by 7 p.m. Oh, that will not be possible. Monday, on Monday. Monday, 7 p.m. We will remind you. Monday, 7 p.m. You will meet at chapel and will follow you. Please appreciate them. Appreciate them. Thank you, sister. Thank you, brother. Appreciate them. Thank you so much for coming. Very quickly, you're worshiping with us for the first time. I'd like you to leave your seat and run out here quickly. We have a blessing and a prophecy for you. If you're worshiping with us, appreciate them. They are coming. Come on, run like you know your destiny is opening up in a new and glorious way. God bless you. Thank you for coming. You'll never be the same. I assure you, God brought you here. Jesus is in this place. Appreciate them. Can you celebrate what God is doing? Thank you. Thank you, sisters. Thank you. You'll never be the same. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is Koinonia. Meeting put together by Eternity Network International. How many of you were blessed tonight? You'll never be the same again. In the name of Jesus. Saints of God, stretch your hands as you prophesy breakthrough. Lord, as a token, give them major breakthroughs in their lives. Let them know that God is at work in this place. In the name of Jesus, we bless you with a fresh hunger for God. We bless you with a fresh hunger. Beyond the breakthroughs that you will receive. A fresh hunger for the things of the spirit. A fresh hunger for the presence of the Lord. Whatever challenge you came here with is swallowed up tonight. In the name of Jesus, go and experience unlimited breakthroughs by the hands of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, thank you once again for coming. Write this down. God's system for activating your streams of income. I want to teach you the kingdom system. There is a Babylonian system of establishing multiple streams of income that ends you in frustration, ends you in penury, or you will be rich but at the expense of your salvation. You will be rich but at the expense of very important things in your life. Everything that we do we must do it from the perspective of the kingdom. And this is where men of God must balance. I believe in, in reaching out to business and getting a lot of business people and their ideas. But please hear me. You must be careful. Not everything taught in the business world should just be lifted and brought to church hook, line and sinker. Many men of God go for a lot of secular business meetings and they teach them a lot of things and they are motivated I've, I've listened to all those people to trust me but you must sustain a kingdom paradigm to be able to edit out the things that are not consistent with the way of the Lord because anything that is not founded on the truth of God's word I don't care what it is it will not last or even if it produces result for you it will take something else out of your life it is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and will not add sorrow to it say amen so what is God's system for activating the streams of income? Let's hurry up. Proverbs 13 verse 22. The book of Proverbs, very quickly. Eighteen verse sixteen. Quickly, it's a popular scripture we always talk about, but from here we'll rush so that we'll finish on time. What I'm about to bring before you is a powerful revelation that will change your life. Proverbs eighteen verse sixteen. Let's read on. It says, "A man's gift." Please listen. Please pay attention. A man's gift does what? 
does two things what's number one it makes room for him is that true what's number two it brings him before a man's gift does two things for him it gives him opportunity and it gives him access write it down your gift does two things for you that is very vital in producing finances in your life it gives you opportunities and then it gives you access access entrance before the great a man's gift so how do you identify the streams of income in your life many people have been taught they so they teach you different businesses and they tell you just do this this no 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 there's no guarantee that because they gave you a good business idea you will succeed you see the mistake this is where we mess up and we mislead people a lot write this down you identify the streams in your life by looking at two things number one your gifts and abilities your gifts and abilities are pointers to the kinds of streams that God has granted you access to your gifts and your abilities write it down number two the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion these are the two scriptural ways of identifying the streams that God puts in your life one your gifts and your abilities two the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion not just any problem you know they tell people search for problems there are problems all around Nigeria you go and try a problem that you don't have passion for and that's when you know that problems are not things you just solve overnight it must be in line with your passion passion is the key that sustains you in a place it is passion that puts you back up when you fail anytime you commit yourself to anything you are not passionate about you waste your time you waste energy you waste resources is God helping us write this down every gift and ability you have is a potential stream of income how true every gift and ability in your life is a potential stream of income every gift and every ability you have is a potential stream look at david for instance almost every gift the bible identifies in david later became a stream for him his ability to play right his ability to be faithful in service his leadership skill everything was utilized in his life i'm about to make a statement that is very striking maybe controversial especially for pastors i want you to listen to me do not let men box you into one stream and stop you from exploring other streams don't get into that illusion of making people box you because they identify and they know you as functioning in one stream if you are not careful people can put you in a box they know you as a pastor and you remain a pastor and die a pastor there are other streams crying for expression but the religious environment keeps people down and keeps people poor there's a lot that i want to say here how many times have many pastors with great entrepreneurial potentials with great leadership potentials there are other streams of income that can find expression but they are boxed to the pulpit and left there why because people say you are a pastor and the meaning of that is remain there be poor there and die there this kind of mentality does not longer exist in the 21st century you cannot live in the 21st century with this mindset again or i am a civil servant so when you call people you say those who are civil servants this side 
and you see a mass of people like this coming to this side those who are businessmen this side that thing is about to change in the 21st century that concept of choosing whether you are a civil servant or choosing whether you are an entrepreneur are you getting my point there must be a weaving of it to survive the vicious financial circle in the 21st century are you getting blessed is God helping you there are many pastors I say this with a particular bias for pastors because we have said pastors are wicked people because pastors have been caught in all kinds of financial scandals in church eating God's money pastors have been found manipulating people and doing all sorts of things and the reason is because they have to respond to the necessary frustration that comes by having a single stream of income now the man is a pastor and is earning 20,000 with five children right you can imagine what that is that you give a pastor a house and one car does not mean he will not need money again and they themselves have not been educated they have not been taught they lack financial literacy are you getting the point now so the pastor has to necessarily keep preaching messages that will manipulate people into because he the pastor's children must go to school is that not true the pastor must also eat some of you after the service you go to the pastor's house 10 people immediately after after service and all of them deserve to be fed this has brought a lot of problems for people especially those in ministry listen to me every potential you have that God put in you is crying for expression and you should never go back to the Lord without giving it expression every gift in you I plan in my life that every gifting and every potential his majesty has deposited in my life will be adequately deployed praise the Lord there are so many things that's why many pastors are poor that's why they are broke one of my greatest mentors dr miles munro a man who was able to cut across both the secular and the contemporary society utilized his potentials as a pastor he was the senior pastor and the founder of bahamas faith ministry international and yet at the same time brothers and sisters he was a consultant for 16 presidents how many a consultant an advisor to 16 presidents at the same time he was so notable the bahamian nation had to make him an ambassador imagine that and then at the, at the same time he owned an aircraft company not aircraft they are busy shouting that people are buying jets many of you may not know let me explain it to you what it means it, he he not own one aircraft Boeing 737 no 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 he owned a fleet of aircraft the very company that deals in it and yet he was a kingdom man he lived well on earth and is gloriously honored in heaven that's why he was a man of integrity he was not just a man of integrity because he's the, there was absolutely no need why will you steal church money for what how much is the money are you getting the point i tell you the truth not exposing people to the different giftings in their lives to deploy it and then leaving them say it's like you are hungry you fasted for three days and then they make hot food nice food rise up and steaming right and then one drink is in front of you and they say just keep your nose and be staring at it but don't touch it that's the same frustration that happens to a pastor that you live with millions in a church account and he's sitting down and his son he cannot pay thirty thousand. they must be thieves necessarily with time even if they are conviction at you see that don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you that's the reason why many many pastors cannot be bold in teaching the truth because they have inconvenienced too many people and God is helping us tonight say after me in the name of Jesus I am gifted shout it in the name of Jesus there is a gift upon my life there are graces upon my life there are abilities upon my life and I will deploy every one of them to become a stream of income.
even if God tells me to drop ministry today, I will never be poor for the rest of my life because there are other streams. Are you getting me? Before God called me, I was doing something. Is that not true? You see, many of us act as if, oh, God found people lazy. Go and read your Bible. Everybody God called into ministry, he called from, he called them from a standpoint of diligently doing something. Moses was tending his father-in-law's sheep. Is that true? Every single one. Peter, they were all fishermen. God does not call lazy people. Please don't make it look like being in ministry is a license unto laziness. There are too many things I can do with my life to bring me stream of income. If I'm not a preacher, at least I can speak. Right? There are so many things. There are books to write. I have different thoughts on different areas. I can document my persuasions. There are all kinds of financial and business vehicles to set up. So don't you see a man of God rich and just think it's church money or just think and think hey, are people not dashing their money. You see articles blackmailing men of God all around and saying a man who was poor but now he has, as though he's not supposed to be blessed. People are arguing and complaining about one jet, two jets. My goodness, I don't know what will happen by the time we come. If we need 100 jets, we will buy all of them. I guarantee you. Very unapologetically. See that? You can be rich through the dignity of kingdom integrity. It doesn't have to be by crooks. It doesn't have to be by pranks. And you don't have to be angry at wealthy people. They look like you. You're of equal age, but your mindsets are not the same. Your sacrifices are not the same. Your courage is not at the same level. Hallelujah. Never allow anybody keep you in one position and not allow you to deploy your talents. There are many of us who are seated here. Bishop T.D. Jakes, the, the pastor of Potter's house, right? He wrote one book, Woman Thou Art Loose. Just one book. And that book brought him $4 million. Multiply that by 210 Naira thereabout. That gives you the equivalent in Naira because he deployed his writing potentials. It became an added stream of income. When people were insulting him for living in a house of 2.1 million, I said, come on, give the man a break. He didn't steal anybody's money. Why will I be worth 10 million, 20 million, 100 million and not live in a house? How much is 1.2? How much is 2 or 3 million compared to 100 million? Don't insult people. If a man buys a car of 20 million, don't insult him and say he's extravagant. Compared to what? You are gauging his success based on your level. Compared to what? You see that? These are some of the poisonous mindsets that have destroyed us. We never forget, we forget the fact that these guys are sick. Their tape ministry, the books that they have written enough will feed them for a lifetime. Just the books. Bishop Oyedeko, for instance, I hear that he does not even collect one naira from his books. And there are at least 60 books he has written. How many of them are bestsellers? Yet we, we, have, we are the first to criticize people and run down men of God and run down people because how much is the peanuts you get from congregations compared to the wisdom. See, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask, not let him criticize those who are walking in it. Hallelujah. Ministry for me alone, with all the blessings of ministry, is only one stream of income. There are so many of them in my life that have been developed and others are still being developed. I will never be poor. It's not about being a preacher. It's about realizing that once there is a demand for what I do, and I train myself in the ability to see, to do it. When you are sleeping, the wealthy people are awake. 
studying seminars doing a lot of things right and then we see them rich and we criticize them please i want to say this koinonia from today never develop the attitude of criticizing wealthy people again you will never be like what you resent anything you drive away from your life you can never be like it honor is the seed for access hallelujah I'm friends to many by the grace of God many wealthy people and many millionaires I'm not so daft to be around people who are blessed and not ask questions see that this is very important but then let me let me quickly balance something because there are so many people who will be hearing now I explained to us that there are all kinds of streams of income watch this the trouble I have especially with men of God in business and other things is that they do not know how to draw the line between the different fragments and facets of their lives are you seeing that now when Jesus entered the temple what did he do he took a whip and he was flogging those who were doing business in the church in the church Jesus showed us that there is a difference. As a man of God, I have my corporate life. I have other dimensions, leadership and all of that. You see that? I cannot come into church and be doing business in the church. No, no, a thousand times no. The moment I do that, I'm taking advantage of the loyalty. Are you getting that? Of the people and using it for my... That's why you never come and hear me talk business in church. No, sir. The Bible says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Right? I cannot bring up a product right now and force everybody in Koinonia to buy it. It is my product, but a lot of men of God are doing it. This is where the balance must come in. You cannot use the vast people that God has given you to train and build and then squeeze into them. No, no. There is a difference between different aspects of your life that's the reason why god fragmented himself into different aspects you cannot know rafa by studying gyra gyra is a dimension itself rafa is a dimension itself seeking is a dimension itself is that true el shaddai is a dimension itself but all of those names belong to one person i am so he said who do men say that i am and they were calling different dimensions of him as a, as a man of God, you are dimensional. While it is true that you do not stay on one place, you must know where the boundary lies. Never carry business into church and go and manipulate people. No, it's wrong. Very wrong. If you are here as a man of God and you are doing it, stop. Stop. You must give people an opportunity to make their decisions. They are not daft. Of course, I understand sometimes because of our kindness and generosity. Do you know why I'm telling you this? Because there are some things I may not be able to share here. But see, the business world is a lot different from ministry. In the business world, you must give people room to take responsibility for themselves. As a man of God, you can ruin your church in one moment. Right? I know there was a situation that happened in, in one church down in Abuja. It's, it's one of the popular churches around where there were some people who brought some land to sell and then they brought it to church and they designed one scheme and members were happy and all of that and then somehow the people were dishonest and they swindled the people with the church the man almost lost his ministry because people started saying our pastor is a thief he connived with people to eat our money do not think because members sit down and love you they love you as a man of god but you must give them room to build their financial capacities don't over pamper people in the name of kindness they will stab you when they fail because the business world is a world that requires its own maturity are you getting me many people do not have business sense and you expose them in the name of church to businesses or some things when things go wrong or it fails they will kill you they will write articles about you they will lock you up as a man of god and so let people take their responsibilities by themselves are you getting what i'm saying is god giving us wisdom 
this is a mistake a lot of pastors have made they come to church anybody just comes in and says i'm a lawyer i have some land i am a this i have that and then the pastor comes and announces and because people love the pastor they now run around and come and say this is our pastor this and that and that or they raise money to buy church land you know, all kinds of things please i'm telling us especially for men of god who are here who are upcoming maintain integrity maintain integrity as a man of God, define the jurisdiction of your work to the ministry and stay there. Now, there are other platforms you can create, like Sunday Adelaja, who created a lot of business platforms. If you want to do anything that is business in the church, set up a committee or a club and let people subscribe to it. Spell the terms of it and let the people know that they are venturing into this, not in the name of the church, but at their own risk. That way, whatever happens, the integrity of the church is preserved. Is God teaching us? I told you I struggle to teach you what I'm teaching you because this is what you would teach in a business class that you pay hundreds of thousands. But this is giving us wisdom, especially for those of us who are leaders. Don't carry the zeal of business ideas or whatever and come and project on people. That they are praying in tongues and they hug you. You don't yet know their attitude towards money. They will stab you and kill you. Is God helping us? Let's continue. So your streams of income should be around your giftings, should be around your abilities, your streams of income. Now look up. I want to teach you something, please. Very important now. Write this word down. Time. T-I-M-E. Write this word down, time. Your life on earth is measured in time. Don't forget this. Your life on earth is measured in time. That means whatever you give your time to, you are giving part of your life to. The time you are giving your employer or your job, your office, is part of your life you are giving to them. Write this down. Focus on activating streams that increase your income without eating up your time. Focus. There is only limited time you have. Everybody has only 24 hours. You cannot have 25 hours in a day. So if you generate streams of income around your life and all of them require your time and your active participation, you will wear your life out and you will be ineffective. Wealthy people focus on activating streams that increase their income without necessarily eating up their time. Let me give you an instance. If I write a book right now, if I write one book, right, I communicate my thoughts, maybe books on, there are so many books that I have, I'm just waiting for the Lord to release me to begin to write books i know many of them will be bestsellers because i will not just get up and write books i will humble myself and meet those who have produced bestsellers and ask them i have the content but what of the marketing what of the publicity never do a thing until you have consulted with the best of the best you will minimize mistakes you will make instant progress so i can write a book right now for instance and then release it and I can be here preaching and somebody is buying my book in a bookstore doesn't know me has never seen me may never see me right and then income is coming into me millions and millions of income coming because I'm documenting my persuasions and there are many areas I can write on I can write on the anointing I can write on wealth and prosperity I can write on leadership all the areas that I know God has granted me grace in. I'm just showing you how one stream. Now I can be here and be effective in Koinonia. Another thing for instance, if I build an estate, you see that? If I build an estate, there are people renting, I don't even know them, I've never seen them for instance, but I'm here teaching the word. My time is being invested to the principal thing I've been called to do, 
but there are channels that are bringing me in. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Very important. If I teach, assuming that we're selling our teachings, imagine the hundreds of millions we would have made by now on just the media ministry. But God instructed us not to do that. The impact is more important than the money. One grateful person can bring what we would have gotten in 10 years and bring in one day. This is the benefit. Every time you dispense value, you must be rewarded. Whether you sell it or you give it free. It's a law. So we are not at a loss at all. Now imagine that today's message, the media department will now package it, the wealthy place, volume 1, volume 2, volume 3, right? And then maybe each of them is sold now. You can imagine that. And all of that is happening. So people are buying it somewhere, whereas you are still here. As much as possible, value your time. Your time is premium. You must know that. You cannot give away your time unnecessarily for everything. It's too much to give your life just for money. No. Let wisdom minimize the dispensing of your time so that you will spend that time on the things that matter in life. I hate seeing people spending all their time chasing after money. You should chase after God. Chase after God. Seek ye first the kingdom and seek ye to align yourself to the principles of the kingdom. That's what is meant by his righteousness here. And he said all other things will be added. Let's hurry up. When you give your time, you give your life. Never forget that. The reason why they pay you salary is because you are exchanging two things for that salary. Number one, you are exchanging your gift or your potential or your, your skill. Number two, you are exchanging your time. These are the two things that go for your salary. You cannot afford to do this for the rest of your life. Because you are 24 hours. If you spend one third or two third of that 24 hours investing in somebody's project and his assignment, how much do you have left for yourself and for the advancement of the kingdom? Imagine that I cannot come for Koinonia now and say because I'm trying to do something there, I'm looking for money somewhere. It's terrible. I'm failing in my assignment. It doesn't matter how much money I make. So you have to be careful so that you don't just... That's the language of those we call hustlers. Hustlers are those who are ready to commit their time to anything that will give them money. Right? They have, their time is valueless to them. So they can give it away just for anything. My time is precious to me because my life is measured in time. God gives me the gift of 24 hours every day and I focus on doing the things consistent with my vision and my assignment. And while it is true that I want to activate streams of income, it will not be at the detriment of my assignment. And so you must structure your life in such a manner that you can activate multiple streams of income and then at the same time conserve your time as much as possible. Praise the Lord. Write this down. There is a, an equation for financial freedom. Financial freedom is equal to financial abundance plus time plus peace of mind. That you have money does not mean you are financially free. Financial freedom is equal to financial abundance, the availability of the resources plus time. There are people who have money but no time. No time to pray, no time to build, no time to spend a quality time with their children and their loved ones and their families. No time at all. They tell you no time. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. They started doing that when they were 20. Now they are 55. I'm busy. I'm busy. And then they die. Because on the seventh day, God rested. You, you are in the ninth day. You have not rested. You will die. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the reason why it's so easy to be rich in the 21st century. In the school of prosperity, especially in the 21st century, almost any and everything has a demand. There is a demand for almost any and everything. This is the reason why there should be no one here seated under the sound of my voice that in the next three years, in the next five years, should be poor. Impossible. There is a demand for just any and everything. The world is a global village. There is a demand for just anything. 
see right now even people's laugh has brought them millions somebody just laughs is it not your ringtone oh yes somebody just laughs around and does everything that side a does another one that side b you see that and you put it as your ringtone and you go and download it and you do a lot of things anything at all anything a lady because she has nice fingers will make millions because she will market the ring of a jewelry company they just keep putting rings on her hand for every ring hundred thousand dollars can you imagine just for having a nice finger there is a demand for anything so you have been playing with that your hand could it be that that's the rod of God just for being fine you can wipe poverty away from your life forever right just for being not fine you can still wipe poverty away from your life because you can be used in both ways it depends on the message that is being communicated um, I'm just I'm speaking generally there is a demand for everything absolutely everything no matter how little the skill is there is a demand for it look at how pastors you may sit down and think that there are already too many pastors allow the glory of God to come upon your life and see how many people will scrounge scrounge after that from today till Wednesday non-stop I have ministrations every day I have a meeting morning and evening you will think there are already enough pastors no no there are 7.2 billion people right you think there are an, enough people selling pure water or whatever it's because you do not know how many people are on earth when you know there is a demand for anything and I told you the formula once there is a demand there is money for it you go and meet somebody and say borrow me 10 naira he'll tell you I cannot but sell something he will pay you for it in the 21st century brothers and sisters you are only limited by your creativity you are only limited by your creativity. Ah! There is a mighty financial army that will rise. Even if you don't pay attention to this, I know that there are millions of people who will take this message and will run with it. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Write one word down. We're almost done. Creativity. Please write it. This is an important key in the school of prosperity. Creativity. What does it mean to be creative? Creativity is the ability to birth new or improved ideas. Oh, this is key to your life. The ability to birth new or improved ideas. If you lack this one ability, you will never be rich. Because that's the key to being different. That's the key to being unique. It's not just what you do. It's the uniqueness in it. And the key to being unique is hidden in one word. Creativity. The first revelation of God in the Bible was not as a savior. It was as a creator. And he created us in that image. Creativity. What we were born to do. Anyone who has a mind has the capacity to be creative. Your destiny is at the mercy of your creativity. This gentleman can produce this. 30 minutes of deep, intense worship just with instruments. And he will pray and fast and train himself and just package something like this. He can call it anything. The dew of heaven, part one. Millions of these copies will be sold because people will put it in their phones. 
can have a contract with most of the the, 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 the people iPhones and, and iTunes and all of these people and they can put they can even put it by default in many gadgets and it's blessing people millions of people are buying it and this guy is getting blessed because there is a demand for everything that's why Don Wen will never be poor I know you gave your life to Christ at his song but he became rich because you bought the thing yes he never sleeps he never slumbers but you bought it or at least it was given to you there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army rising up they will break every chain Break every chain. 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 Creativity is the key to effectively creating a demand for your gifts or your potentials. The reason why nobody has placed a demand on your gift is because you have not added creativity to it. The reason why your shop looks like that of every other person is because you are not creative about it. Let me tell you, in the world of prosperity, you lose by becoming like every other person. Your uniqueness is what stands you out. Your competitive advantage. There is what you get in Koinonia that you will never get anyway. It cannot be cloned. There is what you get from my life that you cannot get anyway. There is what I should get from your life. That I cannot get anywhere. This is your key to prosperity. Men will never come to you if there is an alternative to you. They will come to you to the degree to which you are uncommon and unique. I hear the chains falling, falling. I hear the chains falling. I will give you four streams of income that can help you. That's, that's all we'll touch for this. Um, there are at least eight. I call them recession-proof streams of income. They are all in the Bible. But I'll give only four here. School of Ministry students will add two more. And then that's about it. Any other one has to be in a business or a corporate platform. Ready? Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 if we can get NIV please give us NIV quickly I hear the chains. can we get NIV okay fine Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 please let's save time will you break every chain break every chain it says, give portions to seven, yea, to eight, for you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Right? What other version do I have? It says, it says, I, I can't remember the version now, not, not amplified. It says, invest in seven places, yea, in eight. Um, who has that version? one of these new versions for you do not know what disaster may come upon the land in other words scatter your streams right that concept of lay your egg in one basket is nonsense throw away that theology poor people said that that's why they are poor when the basket falls what do you do you die with it there listen Thank you. God bless you. NLT. It says, but divide your investments among many places. For you do not know what risks might light ahead. I hear the chains. I love the Bible. Hey, hey. Mm. Number one. Land. Land. Everybody write it down. Land. 
open bracket land and anything you can get under it on it and above it it's all called land you know it as real estate land together with anything under it on it and above it look at me you are not rich if you do not own land are you hearing what i'm saying write it so that you don't forget i don't care what else you have you are poor if you do not own land because land is a fixed asset it cannot be stolen even if a bomb falls on that land it can only affect what is on it you will not see a big hole suddenly looking at you land is one of the greatest communications of god's justice and mercy upon the inhabitants of the earth i'll stop there land two education i'm giving you four fail proof streams of income under education write the following anything whether speaking writing or setting up structures that transfer knowledge education is all about imparting knowledge the bible gives us a clue into becoming rich he said before the coming of christ knowledge shall increase there will be an unsearchable demand for knowledge that means anything you do that will transfer knowledge to people is a guaranteed source of wealth. There's nothing to hide. There's no secret about it. There's no secret there in the first place. Education, speaking. How many people rake in millions of dollars every week just because they are able to communicate? They are not just talking. They are transferring knowledge imagine that this was a business meeting and everybody is paying hundred thousand for the seminar calculate how many people hundred thousand times all the people we have including all those who are online and i'm doing the same thing i don't need to talk louder i don't need to shout more the exact same thing 10 years after i have preached this or i've said this or i've delivered this lecture i will still be getting paid for education one of the cheapest aspect of education is writing the ability to document your persuasion for as long as you think there is something you want the world to hear you can document it the only problem is what many people call book writing is nonsense they are just hungry people looking for money so there is no excellence and no creativity and at the end of it only 100 copies are sold and the bookstore tells you please get out but there is a key purpose driven life right rick warren that one book brought tens and hundreds of millions of dollars it was so profound they had to create a workbook for it love and respect there are many books that have become bestsellers rediscovering the kingdom because individuals documented strong persuasions that rattled the ideologies of continents could there be a persuasion in your life right now that you need to birth and bring out you are sitting upon a gold mine and yet you are crying crying for food and crying for water the only limitation to your life should be the voice of God not lack of creativity God speaking to us education number three your job your job paid employment it's a stream of income so your job is not bad you can get a job at least you receive salary from it and the beautiful part of that is that your salary can solve your short-term needs because you know every month a fixed income is coming so it can give you room to focus on other things that will take time to build. How many have I given? Uh, let's stop at the last one, transportation. The only reason why oil and gas is useful 
is because there are human beings that need to move around. We love oil and gas, but we hate transportation. How unwise. I know that the resources are also used for a lot of things. But did you know that for as long as there are human beings on earth, there must be movement. You studied something that was a clue to your prosperity, but you forgot. Remember what we, I think it was in biology, social studies, Mr. Niger. Huh? Biology, Mr. Niger. Movement as part of the quality of living things. Is that not true? That was the key to your wealth that you have been neglecting. Every day, immediately after Koinonia now, listen, every week, I don't know how, okay, I have an idea. You cannot imagine how much is given to the transport companies that transport people without fail every week. Is that not true? Transportation. If they were your bosses, it would have been your money. Are you getting what I'm saying? How many people have had 300,000, 400,000 and then they used it to buy two phones? Foolish person. Whereas the phone is not bringing you anything. There are sometimes in that big phone only 300 naira will be there. And you can't make any call. You cannot even browse. Whereas you would have been able to buy even if it was a small golf. These are the kinds of businesses that you don't even need to know how to drive. Right? The, 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 the driver that carries me around, he started driving me three years ago. And within that three years, he has bought two extra cars. Two extra cars. And I tell you, a large percentage of that was for my money. Think about that. They are always happy. They, you never see them frowning. They are smiling because every time he sees me, he sees his destiny. And for as long as I need his services, I will keep paying for it. How many of you are sitting on millions, hundreds of thousands, roaming around, whereas, or trying to get rooms and apartments to prove a point that does not have to be proved? You want to show people, now you live in a three-bedroom flat that is empty, with one small mattress in one of the rooms, and people think you are a big boy. You are not big, you are small. Whereas something would have been bringing you income. Let me tell you something. The transport sector is a mysterious sector people have never studied. It's a sector that starts bringing you money instantly. From the first day the car goes out, by evening money is coming. 5 a.m. in the morning, brothers and sisters, there are people who get up begging. Whether it is town service, whether it is wherever. I know someone who bought Kekena pen, right? He just bought one, I think, second year or something like that. And then when he bought that Kekena pen, I think about 12, 12,000 comes in every week. 12,000. He just went and registered it with the association, National Union, those their union. And then he's around praising the Lord and giving tight every week. And you are saying, this guy is here, T4. No, 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 no. Do you have to be smart to do that? Necessary. You just have to be there. And that's why I told you there is no reason, brothers and sisters, for people to be poor. What's wrong with five people coming together? You all have 50, 50,000. Have a very well defined term. You don't need to wait till you have one million. What's wrong with three or four people coming together? All of them having 100,000. And you buy a golf. In four, five months, you are broken even. And you can buy another one. And then buy another one. While that is happening, you are busy increasing your financial intelligence. How much have you spent from January to this year to, to now? Some of you millions. Look at how many of our parents are sitting down and getting angry at people. How many times did they pay them arrears of millions? What did they do with it? They went to a club and called friends and blew the money. They blew one golf away in one night to prove that their arrears has arrived. And yet we keep blaming God. But tonight God is giving somebody intelligence. You don't need to register any company. You don't need to know anybody. With an average car or an average golf, at least 3,000 is coming for you every day. This is the minimum. In seven days, it's 21,000 for doing nothing. You don't need to go to school. You don't need to know. But there are many people sitting on you. And when you see blessed people, you think they are arrogant. They are not. They are not. 
the income that comes to your hand is in direct proportion to the demand demand the transport sector there are many people dreaming i will go into oil and gas i will go into oil and gas how much do you know it takes to start oil and gas you want to be a thief can't you start gradually how many people are sitting on five million ten million that are waiting to buy oil blocks of billions you have eaten your own prosperity by yourself how many people have started popcorn popcorn inside abu is that not true popcorn i'll never forget years ago when one of i think that was in 2006 or 7 i wanted to start one popcorn machine popcorn business in new Bamadi, and i wanted somebody to manage for me so i needed to i sent him to go and do a research for me on everything i was surprised when the, the owner of the popcorn said he makes five thousand naira every day every day you are eating you bought it 30 naira but many just like you are paying for it and he said during orientation and uh, uh, what we call it graduation matric it can skyrocket to as much as 15,000 20,000 there is no single ice cream machine in Zaria not that all those ones that uh, they, they put the thing as if it's tough I'm talking of real a standard look at this there are many of you sitting down what's wrong with 10 people who come in with creativity about 250,000 will buy that thing and go and open up something I guarantee you in one month you will make your money back that's how desperate it is I'm, I like ice cream like what there's a place in Abuja every time they see me they're happy because they, my money will finish there I can't make it so I must pay for it whatever you cannot do for yourself be sure to pay for it if you ever get it free someone paid for it who is God speaking to tonight I'm showing you streams I'm a student I'm young very soon you will find out that the difference between you and graduation is one exam just one and you come out and say it's a lie maybe you say get out of here you are finished go 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 why should you be poor when there is such a demand a de there are look let me tell you something if you have 20 20 of any of the things i mentioned there will still not be enough demand how many saloons are in Italy? There are about 40,000 students. 40,000 students or more. And about 60% of those people are ladies. Count the number of saloons you have in your campus. Are they up to 10? I doubt if they are up to 10. Servicing at least 10 or 20,000 people. If you have 1,000 more of those things, it will still not be. yet we criticize those who are producing because we have been we have been wired to consume that's all we do those who produce are the ones who are many of us are are going into food question if we don't buy the food why don't you get into businesses that do not need refrigeration and all of these things i, I don't know about you but i don't like things that give me heart attack you see that that's why I hate businesses that have to do with many people. One person's fight with his wife will affect my diligence. I don't like that. I like to be responsible. I like to be responsible for my, my diligence or otherwise. I can't let another person's carelessness cancel everything I've done. No. If I do well, let me be commended. If I do bad, that's why all those kind of things, shipping vegetable from here to Porta Court, I will get into those kind of things. You can do that, but no way. So if the man is drunk on the way, I suffer because of his drunkenness. I don't like those kinds of business. This is me personally. You have been sitting on a gold mine, wishing that things will change. But God is speaking to you. Especially for those of us who are working. You are earning your 50, 50,000. Why don't you close your eyes and be determined that for the next six months you are going to save let me tell you something write it down never borrow money as much as possible or don't borrow money as much as much as possible this is a difficult thing i know i'm human trust me it's a very difficult thing but i want you to make a vow today with your life
that as much as God grants you the grace, you will never borrow money. The borrower is slave to the lender. Say it after me. Borrowing will put you in slavery forever. You can be addicted to borrowing. Borrowing is like drugs because it comes easy. When you borrow five naira, you will borrow hundred thousand. You will borrow five million until you find out that you are in debt of five hundred million and you cannot know where it came from because of borrowing. A borrower. Some of you, as you are sitting down right now, not just from anything, maybe business failure or whatever, your own personal debt that you have eaten, everything you are wearing and the room you are staying off key, you borrowed money for it. You are smiling, but there is a pile of debt that is growing and you are borrowing to keep servicing it. You will be a slave forever. It is one of the Babylonian system. That's why you notice I never talked about borrowing. I'm sorry, I know that this insults a lot of your business, but I don't believe it. In business, we teach that there's good debt and there's bad debt. You use good debt as a leverage. You use bad debt for consumption. No debt is the kingdom's way. No debt. Say it. Shout it again. After hearing all that I've told you today, you can choose to be emotional about what I've said and get up and return back like someone returning back to his vomit. Or you can make up your mind and say, this is it. I've come to the end of myself. Lord, I'm ready to begin to take decisions. Listen, the key to producing anything in life is to adjust. The most predictable thing in life is change. Change is the most predictable thing. Whether you participate in it or not, it must happen. There are two kinds of people. There are victims of change and there are initiators of change. Whether or not you want things to change, it must change. Listen, a time will come, all your friends will rise and leave you if you don't change. You will either be a victim of the change or a benefactor and an initiator. In Nigeria, many people are the recipients of change the wealthy people are the initiators of it i choose to be in that category i refuse to just be a benefactor of change or just a a, a victim whatever happens i write it in. no sir we are going to pray rise up on your feet psalm 66 please psalm 66 verse 12 Psalm 66, verse 12. Media, can you help us, please? Psalm 66. Please, everybody, rise. It's a very serious moment right now. It's a defining moment for many of us. Everyone read. One, two, read. It says we went through fire we went through water we went through times of hardship and turbulence but by your thank you for watching our entire video today if you feel you can bless someone please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media